So can Amazon's Alexa voice assistant help solve a murder? Authorities in Arkansas seem to think so as they investigate the death of a man whose body was found in a hot tub last year. Police have asked Amazon to assist the, in the obtaining of the voice data on the Amazon Echo in the apartment where Victor Collins was found strangled and drowned. Amazon says it objects to the request as a matter of practice, but it is also not clear that the device will provide clues about the apparent murder. Here to talk about the security of the Amazon Echo and other voice assistants is Tim Moynihan, Gadget Lab writer for Wired. Good to see you. Hey, right, good to see you. All right, so um, you've tested the Google Home, Amazon mm -hmm. Echo extensively. What does a virtual assistant, first of all, let's put that out for our sure. viewers, what does a virtual assistant do? Uh, it's a device that sits in your home, so it's, it's a lot like Siri or the or things on your phone, but it's, it's meant to be a, a fixed device in your home. Uh, you, you, they usually work by, you say, a keyword, Alexa or uh, OK Google, and then once you say that, it sort of kicks in, makes a connection to the Internet, and then uh, runs your query to the Internet and uh, gives you results back. So when I say Alexa, play Bruce Springsteen's Born mm -hmm. to Run, it goes and it finds that song, but is it yeah. recording my voice? Uh, it is when you do a query. Uh, it's not recording anything between the queries, but it is always listening for that keyword. So it's listening for that Alexa, and that's the only software that really resides on the device is, is stuff to pick up that keyword. So is there any way, but, but because it is only listening for that keyword, theoretically, it could listen for any other words yeah. that whoever programs Alexa tells it to, right? In other words, the, sure. the manufacturer. Well, the, the difference is that uh, your queries are sent to the web. Uh, and everything else is sort of saved remotely. So it's just listening for that word. Anything in between your queries isn't saved to a server. But when you do make a query, it does send that stuff to a server where it's stored. Wow. So that's, that's sort of a privacy issue that uh, if you're used to Google, if you're used to Amazon saving sort of a, a breadcrumb trail of, of your search, uh, then that's another thing to, to be concerned about. So again, I mean, I'm just trying to get to understand what it's not necessarily a risk, but mm -hmm. for example, if there was somebody who wanted to do harm in mm -hmm. this country or to another individual and they said certain key words that if the FBI heard you saying them or if the police heard you saying right. them, they'd be knocking on your door, mm -hmm. um, can that happen? It, can there be a key word like terrorists or uh, ISIS or blow up or murder? Uh, that would have to be controlled by the companies themselves and on the server end. I, I don't think there's anything built into these systems that do that. Could it, is it possible? Sure. sure. Um, and what's happening is when, you're, when your voice queries are sent to a server, that stream is encrypted. So it's, it's not impossible to break, uh, but it is, it's harder to break. So you need, you need the encryption key on the other end to, to understand what is going on in that voice clip. Would it be difficult to hack that encryption? Uh, it would be difficult to hack. I mean, nothing. One thing that's been proven in the security realm is nothing is impossible. Right. Uh, it makes it uh, quite a bit more difficult. Um, and you're, you're talking about big companies here, like Amazon and Google. They protect their data pretty well. Uh, the the bigger issue, I would think, is someone getting a hold of your, you know, Google or Amazon password and finding everything online rather than through that little unit. And I know you're not a lawyer, but I guess perhaps mm -hmm. uh, what Amazon is, is, is perhaps thinking of, and the way I think of it as a layperson, also not yeah. a lawyer, is if the FBI or if the police want to tap your phone, they need to get yeah. a warrant exactly. to do that, right? Yeah. And that's the only way, because when you're in your house, you have a, a reasonable um, understanding that there's, you are in a private setting Correct. and you need some kind of official or legal document to allow people to listen to what you're saying. Right. There's, there's, I don't think there's anybody wiretapping your home through this, but you know, as, as we've seen with laptop uh, cameras, the cameras right, on laptops cameras, right. and the microphones, someone can take control of that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that because these devices are, are running a robust or known operating system, okay. that that is a major uh, threat. However, the more of these devices that are in people's homes, the more people have to worry about that. Uh, there's been a lot of movement on the router end to build security into the actual router to sort of either uh, detect when these th kinds of things are happening or, or someone's trying to do that and then sort of quarantine the threat. I mean, I, you know, I wonder, I mean, we keep our credit card information, my credit card information is on my Amazon account so that right. I can just do my instant purchasing, do these devices also keep that information? Uh, yeah, that's kept on your Amazon account. So you can set it up to do, you know, easy ordering of stuff. I'm out of milk. Right, on milk. Alexa, right. Uh, so if someone had access to your device and wanted to order all sorts of milk, maybe they could do that.
um, but that you know that requires access to your home. Oh, okay. And finally, I guess um, you can go incognito on Google okay. Chrome, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can use other browsers that have a relative sense of security on them. Although they mm -hmm. can always find your ISP address. Can sure. you go incognito with Echo or these other devices? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, what's happening is by default, and the, the way these systems have to work, because there's very little processing power on the device itself, that uh, all your queries are going to a server. So what that means is everything is saved by default. There are ways, and I wrote an article on Wired about it, to sort of look at what it's saving, delete it one by one, or sort of delete it after the fact. But in order for these things to work, at least right now, they need to capture your voice and send it to a server. Real quick, Tim, final question. Yeah. I mean, should people be concerned about these devices in their homes? I mean, we're already mm -hmm. tracked and tagged almost right. everywhere we go. I mean, yeah. having a thing in your house that conceivably can be used to listen to what you're doing or saying, mm -hmm. is that a c cause of concern? I would, I mean, yes, if people are concerned about privacy, but what I would say is in the grand scheme of things, it's probably on the low end of the concern spectrum. This is a thing that sits in your house. It can't be, really be used to track you while you're moving around. Uh, the, the kind of interactions that people have with these devices usually isn't that, you know, it's not really private or embarrassing information. So unless people uh, use it against you, listen to Bruce Springsteen or something like that. <laughs> I want to know that. I listen that, to Bruce. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that big a concern, but it is sort of a concern. If a T-800 yeah. appears in my house one day, I'm going right. to blame the Amazon <laughs> Exactly. Echo. Tim Moynihan, thank you very much. Right. Appreciate it.